They told you to just layer on compost and walk away, but is no-till really truly that easy? If you don't know who I am, my name is Ashley and I have a bachelor's of science in soil science. I've been working in the agriculture industry for well over a decade and I've been gardening with my grandma since I was five years old. And on this channel, I do science-based gardening content. Let's zoom out for a second. No-till isn't just simply a trend, it's a movement, but the truth is it doesn't work for everyone, especially if your soil's not ready for it. In this video, we're gonna uncover three truths when it comes to no-till gardening and some things you need to take into serious consideration before you jump on board with this movement. But let's face it, when it comes to the garden, whether you're choosing no-till or something else, it does take a little bit of skill, and that's today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that has sponsored the channel for years and it's because I use it religiously. It can help you with gardening all the way to growing a small business. One of the most bizarre things I learned in university was the value of learning how to paint. Now you could use watercolors or you could use acrylics. It doesn't really matter but the importance of it is actually using paints to be able to identify the differences in the world around you. So it works wonderfully if you're trying to identify different layers within the soil for example or very simply you're looking to identify different forms of plants and exactly how they interact with each other one way to do this is literally through painting i not even lying it's actually what we did for one of our university courses and so because of that i am reliving that course via skillshare and i am taking the organic expressive florals with watercolor and ink i'm by no means a good artist but it is again proving to me the value of being able to paint the world around you the first 500 people to use the link in my description or pin comment or very simply actually scan the qr code on the screen will get one month free of skillshare so don't delay. There's only 500 memberships available and you don't want to miss out. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's jump back into the no-till garden. No-till wasn't invented in the garden. No-till was actually developed on farms. It gained traction in the Dust Bowl era. The reason for that is because it improved soil structure and helped retain moisture in a time where it seemed like that was impossible. Now the version of farm no-till is of course using big tools, big implements, and large swaths of land. So the rules are a little bit different when it comes to gardening. For example, in Nature 2016, there was a meta-analysis published about no-till gardening, and it did improve moisture retention and soil structure. But the caveat being to that, only if proper crop rotation was incorporated. So what you can do with that information is adapt the concept, but not blindly follow because you do need to monitor both soil biology and your actual soil structure. And fun fact there that use different YouTubers out there that use different forms of no-till gardening. For example, Charles Doubting uses a compost version. Paul from Back to Eden uses wood chip layers. And Richard Perkins uses a totally different version of no-till gardening. What this tells us is it's not one size fits all. Number one issue I tend to see and get a lot of DMs about is compaction. It turns out if you just throw soil on top of your soil and it's compacted, it doesn't work out the way you want it to. Your plant roots are absolutely going to hit a brick wall. One way to determine if your base layer is compacted is to do a percolation test. What you want to do is dig a hole about 12 inches in depth, fill it with water, let it drain, and then fill it with water a second time. If that second water fill takes over four hours to drain, that's a sign of compaction. And it's a sign of compaction that plant roots will not be able to overcome. Now, if you've already jumped in and decided to go for no-till, and you know for a fact that your soil is compacted beneath that no-till garden, you can choose to just ride it out. In 2018, there was a study done that showed between two to six years is the time frame of cover cropping that needs to take place in order for that soil to be broken through. So you could expect your soil to be less than nice for around the two to six season mark. For me personally, I would start from scratch and simply consider tilling that initial space and then also incorporating some compost during that tillage process and then topping it with mulch. This will help reduce the potential of compaction in the here and now as well as in the future. The next major misconception when it comes to no-till is that you don't disturb the soil at all. But the truth is you do need to disrupt the surface of the soil because seeds don't germinate in air pockets, which means we need good soil to seed contact. The only way to achieve this is for that top layer to be disrupted and to become a fine granular 
mix. After that, we actually do want to place some compaction onto the seed just to help with germination. In 2020, Agronomy Journal actually published a study that showed disrupted soil that was finer texture in nature that was not heavily aggregated actually increased germination rates by 25 to 40%. So that's a pretty big deal. If you choose to skip that, you can expect half the seeds that you normally would get to germinate to germinate in this case. And it doesn't have to be much. You just have to tickle your soil a little bit. Serenade it, if you will. Give it a tickle. Give it a massage before you decide to probe it without it saying okay. And you just have to do that via a rake over the soil surface. It could be your hands over the soil surface and just disrupting that top layer. Number one, it's important to understand that no-till was designed for farms and that we need to take some liberties with it to be able to transform it to a garden setting. If your soil isn't ready, you're gonna have to dig, whether it's now or in the future. And no-till doesn't mean no touch. You need to still disrupt that soil surface in some capacity. The way to know if you're suffering from any of that is to do a percolation test. And if it fails, that's a good sign. If you have poor germination or wavy germination, and if your plants seem very easy to pull out with zero resistant come fall and just a single root ball, that's your next sign. If your no-till garden has flopped, don't worry. It's just your garden giving you some signs. Be sure to drop your results for your percolation test or some issues you've had with no-till in the comments down below low and then if you are ever questioning exactly what's going on with your garden soil feel free to dm me on instagram i will get to your comments eventually and geek crew remember subscribe sharing is caring and like if you enjoy this content i'll talk to you guys next time bye